Okay, we're back. Okay, I got some cylinders to hone here. So I got some uh, obsolete big bore um, gym cylinders for a twin cam. And I got some Ironhead Sportster cylinders that are I need to get done. So this here, I ordered up some KB pistons. These are forge line. These are their line to line coating option. That's what the, uh, the LCA is. That their LCA means line that has line to line coating on it. Line to line coating is a wearable coating. So you put it in tight, it will wear to size. If it wants a half a thou clearance, it'll be a half a thou clearance. If it wants a two thou clearance, it'll wear to two thou clearance. And it'll wear what it wants. So all I gotta do is make this fit into the cylinder. So right now it almost fits, see? So I have to measure these. See what clearance I want. KB said that they wanted um, two and a half thou clearance. But that's without the coating. The coating it makes it thicker than what it was. So you don't know how thick it really is underneath the coating. And basically, from the numbers they gave me, it, this one's about three quarter of a thou over zero, and the size it should be at two and a half would have been a half thou over zero. Easy, most piston manufacturers will make zero be the size that you want, but that's why you never go by you. You don't go to a certain size; it never works out. These are uh, three and seven eighths bore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here for a zero fit, and then the coating will wear to size. And see, each one is different because the coating is different thickness on each one. This one's a thou thicker than that one because of the coating. I'm not going to make the cylinders a thou different. I'll tell you that right now. That ain't happening. So I'm going to do. I'm going to. I'm going to set it at one thou over standard. This one will be a, a negative half thou. This will be a plus quarter of a thou. When I'm all done. See how tight that is. Doesn't want to go in. Now my race bike, I actually run them like that. We have to push them through the cylinder when they're brand new. Then you, uh, after you burn a hole in the piston on the run, you take the piston out. The piston works nice and freely up and down with no clearance. Looks perfect there, but I'll have a big hole down the side of it. Too much nitro and nitrous mix. But uh, they're self-fitting. And I was doing that 20 years ago before the tech line put, before this came out. I used a Swain Tech coating, different one. It wasn't wearable, but I made it wearable. Okay, so I got my number I'm going to use. I'm going to go one thou over zero, which is a half thou bigger than what the piston should be if it didn't have the coating on it. So that means the piston can wear down to the coating size and still be, if all the coating goes away, it can be a half a thou bigger than what it should be. If that makes sense to anybody. Everything you do is an unknown until you do it. <clears throat> okay, this mic does not match this mic because they never do. I always go by this one. This is just a reference mic. So this is where it just fits in the hole. See, it's just a little clearance. Got a little drag on it between the pins. Right there, it almost almost holds the weight of the mic. So now I drop it, I gotta come back and check it again. Right there gets tight. Okay, make sure your mic's at one thou over. It is. So on this mic, it is uh, where's our number at? Zero. One, two, two and three quarter. About two point eight thou. See the line right there? I don't know if you can see it in the light. So I'm going to hone these cylinders out to, to where it's at 2.8 thousandths. And right now they are at about that. <laughs> I 
They are 2.5 thou. You got two tenths to hone out. Three tenths. About three tenths. Okay, so I got to hone out three tenths on that one. Okay, now where's my other cylinder at? I got one. We need two. So these pistons, these cylinders were made by Jim's. See Jim's. These are very thick sleeves. See how thick the sleeve is in here? It's a quarter inch thick sleeve. So this is almost like having a steel mm -hmm. cylinder. The cylinder will stay round and true and straight because there's so much metal in this and the metal being steel or cast iron in this case, not stupid ass aluminum. It's a very strong cylinder so it'll stay true. Most of your cylinders are made out of crappy aluminum with a real thin ass steel liner in it and they warp all over the place. See how thick this thing is. See how thick that is up there? That's a thick sleeve. So that means it'll get more horsepower, I'll live longer and everything. Quit making them because it costs too much. And nobody's going to spend the money. What a shocker. So, finally got a customer that wants something good. I actually bought it for a project I was going to do years ago. I never did it because I don't like twin cams. So I never did it. So it's a virgin cylinder. It hasn't been opened yet. Ooh, look at that. It's a virgin brand new 15 year old cylinder. <laughs> now it's 15 years old. It's over 10 years old, I know that. In case you want to go hunt for what it is, there's the number. J1508. Good luck on finding one. There's how they come. Okay, what's this one? It's about the same size. Okay, so basically I just got to give this a flash home and it's going to be sized. So, if I want to give it an extra tenth or so, I don't really have a problem with that, but it'll be close. Alright. Oh, mail. Mail call. Okay, these are definitely cold, no doubt about that. Well, I'll get warm, then I'll be too hot. Okay, so these are. We're gonna use some fine stones, and then we're gonna do a, a plateau cut on the top final. So I got two different grits I use. All right, so. These are a 500 A in stone, which is an automotive number they don't use anymore. Which is about a 380 grit, I think. It's either 320 or 380. 102. And then for the plateau cut, I pull out the next one up, which is an industrial stone, because they make finer stones on industrial. I don't even see a number on these. There it is. There's a number. You read that? I can't. Probably a five. MJ something probably. Uh, MU maybe. Eh, fucking light doesn't work. Yeah, whatever. They're probably a 97 or some stupid number. I uh, can't read it. Maybe an 85 or an 87. <clears throat> so these are going to be in a 400 grits at least. So this is what I'll cut the tops of the peaks off. When you hone set you get a cross hatch with these sharp edges like this. If you knock the peak off, it's a plateau cut. So now your mountain, instead of being like that, will be like this. The low spots hold the oil, the flat spots where the rings go across for low drag. If you have points up there like that, it's high drag and a lot of grit. If you've got a plateau, it's very slick. It's like being broken in already. So it's like I give you the first thousand mile break in by just how I hone it. 
which is what I like to do. So I don't like doing 2,000 mile break-ins. I like two mile break-ins. All right. I do not use torque blades because they're a piece of crap and don't work. The thicker you got a steel cylinder, the less you need torque blades too. Torque blades don't work, so I don't use them. Every time you put a torque plate on and off the cylinder, it changes. If it doesn't repeat, it's not accurate. So if you got no accuracy, why are you even doing it? There we go. And the finish you get with or without torque plates is the same. So, again, why do it? I stroke it back and forth, changes the cross hat pattern. <clears throat> That's a little bit too vertical for me. So I'm stroking this a little bit too fast. I have cylinder so I can dial in my stroke pattern. The stroke pattern changes with each stone set. Stroke a little bit, and I flatten the angle out a little bit. That looks a lot better to me. I don't know if you can see a cross half cut in there, but there's what it looks like up close. Okay, let's see that for a moment. First thing I do is set the mic to the side and one around. That's good. This side was okay, go a little bit of tight on the side. Definitely tight down here. Do sound work. Right. Yeah. You can see the lowest spot. That's this gray area through here. Nope. Right through here, this gray area is a low spot. The sun was not round. That could be because of the temperature we're at right now. See more strokes, but dial it in. Maybe there's something different, so I guess this mic has changed. And it is. I guess in the same spot. Definitely tight. Uh. Right. One, two, and 
quarter, like that and change. Cut the brochure. enough. Definitely get a lot of oil on me. Okay, it's our plateau cutters here. seeing those drag out marks when you do it. Yeah well, no big deal. Okay, so these are done. Mike has moved obviously. Oh yeah. It helps when the mic doesn't move. This one is just a tick tighter than the other one. Probably a tenth at most. Difference. These aren't marked front or rear, so I'll clean them up and mark them. Because one piston was a foul difference, so I'll make sure I'll match the piston to the bore. Alright, I'm gonna go clean all these up and then I'll be back. Okay, I got these all honed out. I marked these front and rear because the pistons are front and rear. This one's the rear one. That's the front one. Got a mark on it, see? Cylinders are identical, so I marked them accordingly. I think they're all identical. And the different bolt hole cuts. Nope, they don't matter. I see these are cut the same, so these are the same. There's about a tenth of a thousand difference in about in this area right here. Clear that one and this one. So those are good to go. So there's what the hone finish looks like. So it's smooth to touch, but you, you put the finger and you feel here a little bit.
still not super rough, but it's there in here. But it smooths the feel because it's the plateau cut. So there you go. That's how it works. I wouldn't look these up. I bought these in 07. This is 20. 13 years ago I bought these. There you go. Obsolete product. Oh, the label would have probably told me that too. You use a date code on that crap someplace. Probably down in here. Fine print somewhere. You have to look it up. But, uh, oh well. These are good to go for the customer. So he should be happy. Looks like uh, made in Mexico is where all the American made stuff is now. There you go. So much for being made in Arizona. Made across the border in Arizona. Arizona South. Yeah, that's what that is. Alright, that's it for this set. Now we can move on to real Harley parts.